Hey guys, Tom here from the Investing with Tom YouTube channel. Welcome back to the channel. If you enjoyed today's video, hit like, hit subscribe, and that way you can see future videos as well. So the two most popular videos on this channel are all around how to calculate intrinsic value for a stock. So how do you know what a business is fundamentally worth? And are you able to buy that business at a discount? Um, and those, both of those videos have started to get quite a bit of traction and, and quite a few views by the standards of this channel. Uh, and it's meant that I can't keep up with comments uh, as well as I would generally like to. So um, there were a lot of common themes and kind of common questions with many of the comments on each of those videos. And that's essentially what I wanna to get to today to try and clarify a few things um, for the people that have watched those videos and have got questions. So I hope this is useful. Uh, like I say, if you enjoyed the video, hit like, hit subscribe, but for now, let's get straight into it. So each of the questions I'm gonna be answering here are coming from the newer intrinsic value uh, video, the one that goes through the sort of Monish Probri discounted cash flow style analysis. So uh, let's get straight into it. And by far the highest rated question on this video is basically how does this method compare to your older video about finding a fair and undervalued price for a stock? Or does the older method not apply now? So, so very good question and I'll answer it like this. So the first method comes straight from Phil Towns book rule one and it's his sort of margin of safety method that he still uses today. The second, the second method is more of a traditional way of approaching valuation for a business and that's through the discounted cash flow which Monus Probri goes through. So um, I still do use Phil Towns margin of safety calculator every now and then um, but to be honest I've changed my philosophy slightly and I've tended to shift more towards the discounted cash flow style approach um, and the reason for that basically is the margin of safety method essentially looks purely at what the stock price has to do in order to get a 15% compounded rate of return or whatever rate of return that you put into that calculator. Um, but there are you know, ways that you can get a return from stocks that aren't really accounted for well in that method. So really dividends have been the big, been the big one. If you want a 15% return, uh, you don't have to get as big a return on the stock price appreciating if you're also getting dividend payments. Um, and that's better captured in the discounted cash flow style analysis. So that's what I focus on. Um, and that's kind of the reason that I have transferred across. So if you have a stock that doesn't pay a dividend and you need to figure out, you know, what does this stock price have to do to get me my 15% return over a period of time, I think the margin of safety calculator can still work well. Um, but I think the discounted cash flow style is much more appropriate for kind of a broader range of businesses. So that's the reason I have shifted to that one. Now the next question, which I got several different uh, sort of versions of, of the same kind of question, is basically after we know the intrinsic value of a company, uh, how do we go about figuring out a price at which we would buy it? And I've spoken about this on a few times a few times in the channel before, and um, there's not a super simple answer on this. So the way I personally approach it is obviously I'm looking for as big a discount as possible and I have certain rules where I will put uh, more and more of the cash I have available to work at certain discounts and I'll put a link to the video where I talk about that. Um, it's a philosophy I, I picked up from Monish Pabrai. Um, but assuming that I, let's say, you know, I'm, I'm almost fully invested and um, I've picked up a number of stocks at the various discounts that I talk about in that video. Um, really everything comes down to opportunity cost. So if I already own a business that is what I think 50% discounted to intrinsic value, and then I find another business that is only 30% discounted to intrinsic value, I'm not gonna make that switch. But if I was in a situation where I had no investments at all, I was just 100% cash, I would be much more inclined to put money to work if I found um, more moderate discounts. So there's not really a simple answer. It kind of depends on your situation and everything comes back to opportunity cost. So um, what's the opportunity cost of holding cash versus being invested in something slightly discounted? Um, and what's the opportunity cost of being slight, some, in something slightly discounted versus something large, you know, more largely discounted? So, so hopefully that makes sense. There's not a super simple answer on that but generally speaking i'm looking for at least a 50 percent discount if i'm uh just starting to initially put cash to work but in a perfect world the the bigger the discount the better 
Uh, also got a couple of different versions of uh, this question here, which is basically for smaller companies when free cash flow numbers are typically reported in millions rather than billions, will the spreadsheet still work? Uh, the answer is yes, just enter any number that was previously in billions and millions instead and that will get you your answer. So um, I'll put up a, an example for a company here, I guess, to, to demonstrate that. Uh, but yeah, pretty straightforward one there. There's nothing magical about entering billions versus millions. So feel free to do that. Next question, which was pretty common, and this was actually a common question about, across both of my uh, main intrinsic value calculation videos. And this is basically how do we value a company that has either negative earnings or negative free cash flow? Um, and the short answer to that is if a company continues to have negative earnings and negative free cash flow indefinitely, that company is not making any money and you as an owner of that business are probably not going to make any money either uh, and the intrinsic value is zero so that's the basic answer if nothing changes uh, i'm assuming if you're looking into a company with negative cash flows though you think that is probably going to return to being a positive cash flow figure at some point uh, and you think you are going to get some sort of return so um, in that situation i think you're probably going to struggle to use some of the formulas i've got in terms of growing that free cash flow number out into the future in the free cash flow column of the spreadsheet, uh, you're probably going to have to make some manual inputs of what you think free cash flow might look like. So again, I'll put up an example of how that might look here, um, but definitely include those negative cash flow years because they will detract from intrinsic value and, and they should. So the value of any business is the amount of cash that can be returned to owners over the lifetime of that business discounted back at an appropriate rate, which is what we're trying to do in this discounted cash flow. And if you have some negative cash flow years in there, those should definitely be included. So that's the answer on that one. Um, but by and large, negative cash flow businesses are much more dangerous, I would say, generally speaking. But they can obviously turn into very profitable businesses and work out quite well. Uh, you just have to be, be a bit careful with those ones. Again, got a couple of different versions of this question as well, which is, do, does this method apply to other markets? Uh, basically, it applies to anything. So whether you're calculating the, the intrinsic value of a stock, of a farm, of a rental property, of anything in any market, basically, that produces cash flow um, and should be priced relative to that cash flow, then yes, it will work. Uh, so there's three more quick questions that I want to get to. The next one is quite an important one. Uh, and it's something that I got a lot of Instagram DMs about actually. So this was essentially about how do we how do we go about deciding on the growth rate that we want to use in our intrinsic value models for a company. So obviously you can get some insights to analyst expect expectations from things like Yahoo Finance, but those are typically only sort of five years out. So how do we go about getting growth rates for years after that? Um, Again, unfortunately, this is one of those questions where there's not uh, an easy answer to that, uh, other than nothing beats understanding the business and making kind of a judgment call from there. Uh, my, my main piece of advice there would be to be relatively conservative. Um, don't get too kind of excited and blue sky on what you think a company can achieve. Uh, put in something that you think is very realistic and estimate your intrinsic values conservatively. So the next one is all about when do I use the enterprise value method versus the market cap plus cash method. So those are the sort of the two options that I went through in the video. So we used market cap plus cash for Apple and we used the enterprise value option for Ford um, because we, we wanted to demonstrate the effects of them having a large amount of debt on what their intrinsic value is. And the answer to that basically is that I use the enterprise value method for pretty much every business really, regardless of their debt levels, um, because the levels of debt and the levels of cash that the company has are captured in that enterprise value figure. So that's what I'm typically using every time. And the final common question that I wanna to get to is, uh, obviously a lot of our intrinsic value numbers are calculated either on a market cap or an enterprise value basis. And there was a little bit of confusion about how we convert that to an actual stock price. So um, frankly, if you're doing all of your valuations on a kind of whole company basis by looking at the market cap and, and enterprise value numbers, um, then you're simply looking at the discount on a market cap basis as well. So if you think something's worth $100 billion and in market cap, and it's currently trading at $50 billion in market cap, um, 
you're going to get the exact same maths, exact same discount percentage if you were to convert everything to a to a per share basis. But if you really want to just have a per share number that you note down, uh, basically what you'll need to do is take that intrinsic value of the market cap or the intrinsic value with, with enterprise value and divide that by the number of shares outstanding. So uh, that figure is usually reasonably easy to find. Uh, number of shares outstanding, you can just look that up. It's in the annual reports. Um, it's on several websites. The quick way to kind of roughly calculate that where it will be 99% correct if you can't find that shares outstanding figure is just to divide the current market cap by the current share price and that will give you um, an estimate of the current number of shares outstanding. And those are some common questions from the intrinsic value videos answered. So I hope that clarifies a few things. If there are other questions that you think I've missed, um, drop them down in the comments below and go through all the comments if you're watching this and vote for the ones that you would like to um, see me follow up on at some point. I'm definitely happy to answer those if you think I might have missed one. So that's all from me today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit like, hit subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.